Knowing the map is very important at Squad Busters. Whether you want to know the best route for farming or how to escape or even engage with an opponent, it is very important to know your next move. And that's why we are starting today with the Green World and in this video I will show you the different map layouts and will tell you some good strategies so that you can master the game even being a new player. And with that said, thank you everybody for being here again, really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, it would be really nice if you can like the video, write a nice comment and subscribe for free. Before we hop into the thematic, a big shout out to the creator of these incredible assets, it is Alpe. And the link to those assets will be right down below the first comment in the comment section. As you may know, each world consists of three different maps. We got here the Buster Valley for the Green World, together with the Rumble Meadow and the Twisting Trails. We want to check out now the overlay of all those maps, first in the beginner state and later in the end game state, when you get access to the carrots and further utility. After checking out each map, we want to go more into some strategies for each of the maps to start and the late game. So let's get right away with the first world, it's Buster Valley. And as it is in common, we got there 10 spawning positions around the map. With that, we got in total 34 chests, 16 boxes and 28 trees. Ooh, 28 trees. You already can see where that is leading. If you want to play a crack, feel free to, since there are many, many trees. But be aware, other players can use him as well. Since the green world is the first world, those map layouts are pretty similar. We got there quite some short distances to the center and not too many blocking obstacles. Checking out the second map, we can see there almost no difference, uh, while we have for sure some little differences on the outer sides and the inner sides. One very important thing is that there are breakable bridges on the outer sides, as well as here some parts in the center, and they are a little bit switched in between those worlds, so be careful not to run into the direction where a bridge is already broken, because that can block you and you might die there if an enemy is chasing you. So that is a very important thing already for these strategies later. Those bridges where you spawn can break up. So if you decide to move over to the next spawn place, be aware you can't most likely go back unless the little monsters keep on staying on the bridge or you placed, for example, a cannon or another building on the bridge. Then it will be there for a little bit longer. Buster Valley is a straightforward map with no many corners or not really that many things which should scare you. We got there four further breakup bridges in the middle, while we have there also four on the second world. And we got only two on the third one, Twisting Trails. If we compare the amount of chests and boxes, they are all the same in the Creel world, which is pretty good. And it should make an easy way for you to get to know the game, since the map layout is pretty similar, you get every spawn area you get two trees two chests and one box for utility and the boots so that you get some additional boost for the start which will help you to farm pretty fast and don't forget to collect those boxes i see many players not using it and especially in those modes or setups where you don't have speedsters well those boots are very important if we now want to check out buster valley in the end game we already can see we got 80 carrots in total as well as four times the tool. First the tools for sure will be for you the B of B, the character which is flying around and causing some further damage. In the center we got most likely the tank positions which is very nice because tank is beast of a unit and causes a lot of damage. But you also can see there is no change to the existing trees so the map layout which you learn at the beginning of the game when you are starting it will not change unless they changed with a future update, but it will be then most likely the same for the end game. On the second world, Rumble Meadow, we get two less chests and that is already important to know, so that you don't run to a position where it would be on the starter world. Furthermore, 16 boxes remains the same, 30 trees and we got here 64 carrots. But that means on this map we got 16 less carrots in total, which could be a deciding criteria whether to play Mavis or not. So that is very important to keep in mind that not all the endgame worlds have the same amount of carrots. And we got here for sure four tools. Coming now to the twisting trails, we can see straight that there are 72 carrots while we have also 32 chests, 28 trees. So that is the same thing as with the carrots before. We got two less trees here while this is not too important. But the amount of carrots 
16 in difference from the highest amount to the lowest here in between those two worlds could be the criteria to decide to not go for Mavis, as I just told you. Coming to twisting trails in the end game, we got there as well 32 chests, 72 carrots, so this value is right in between the two other maps. We got 28 trees, so that means two less than in the two other worlds, but this will be not as important as the amount of carrots to decide to play crack or not, since two trees are not that big value. So as you already could see, the environment of the map varies a little bit in the end game, and I guess not everybody was aware of that, so definitely look out which map you are playing, and it is also important for the different strategies. I will now explain my different strategies to this map overlay here, and as I told you, the map overlays in general are pretty similar to the other green worlds, so whatever I'm saying here also counts kinda of for the other two green world maps. So we just want to think ourselves into match spawning here on the top left side. Then for sure if I get to use a crack in the first crate I would go with a crack and chop those two trees while then getting the next crate and even the third one it should be respawned in that time. And for sure don't forget to collect the boxes. That initial speed boost will help you either to escape or get faster to your next position. The first area there is no tier 2 monster only these little skeletons or robots and that means okay if you want to get some further loot and the first gems you have to move more to the center right in this white area this is the border which tells us until which position the wines will go not looking at the angry wines they will move a little bit deeper in but also the spawns the initial spawns of the tier 2 monsters are right in this white circle. I know a little bit later they can move also here in the outer sides but that is very important to start the match. So if I would not choose crack I would start most likely with a bridge here or with a, the utility since utility box has most likely three coins so you can straight open the next crate so that would be another way to move and start the match. Get out of the chest get the box and then get to the next chest. That is also the thing which I most likely do when we are playing the mega unit start. Because we are starting only with the mega unit and I don't want to waste there that much time. The same counts as well for the other positions. Not even being there in the corner. We got quite some even ways. While we have their little advantage in this field as well as in this one. As well as the two left and right ones. As those trees are straight next to each other. A crack could be a very decision, a very good decision in those four fields in total, because you don't have to run from the next, uh, from one to the next tree, and you will be able to farm them super fast. And then it is for sure depending if you want to go for farming, the same counts there for sure for Mavis. Get to the carrots, maybe fusion Mavis as early as possible. If you are lucky to fuse the Mavis early, you can go straight to this field. Furthermore. If you start in these two fields, I would access after the initial carrot field straight the big one here because that initial loot is kind of massive. And if I get access to the big field there, I most likely move straight to the center because right here we get a lot of chests. So we could cycle around here. That will be four chests and that can be very important. I guess it happened to you as well that you were not able to open the chests as fast as you needed because they were already taken by some other players. Coming then, as I mentioned before, to the mid game, either farming with crack, killing monsters or choosing the Mavis, I prefer taking the center. Center is dangerous, it could be for sure some high risk, high reward game there, as it is more likely that the other players are going inside, since there are the boss monsters. They are dropping more loot, sometimes even keys, which is very nice to get some free trades, and a lot of other players choosing two further strategies. Either if you have access to the trader, they are staying on the outer side, farming little monsters, farming coins and with that gems, or hunting AI players, so bots or weaker opponents. But I prefer staying in the center. Please write down below in the comments which strategy you prefer and why you think it is maybe better to stay on the outer side as long as possible. On the later stage of the game we will only have access to the white area here. That means we are pretty close to each other and then the struggle starts. If you had a slow early game you will be weaker than the opponents then it is just like 
farming and running. If you are the stronger guy, you can definitely start hunting opponents because each killed player helps you to stay in the top five. While we got on the other two maps, pretty good big circle in the center, which is also counting there for sure for the angry vines right there and here. So a lot of space to escape and see the opponent in a good way. Right here, twisting trails might be the hardest one for the uh, end game since we got here two bridges which can break up at the late game definitely they are broken um, so you can't run a complete circle it is more designed as an S here so you have to use the outer way and if that is happening in angry vines this is pretty chaotic sometimes coming back to the carrots this might be the best map to play Mavis just from the effect of carrots but also in the center you have your further carrots which you don't have on the other maps so on the later game in the inner circle you don't have too many carrots but it is even worse on this map but this one here four times four carrots here and you can access them pretty fast initially that bridge is built up so that is also nice to know but be aware you are not the only guy going for the carrots so that is everything for now, which I can tell you. We may see some further changes or even utility in the future. And hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Please write down below in the comment section your ideas and strategies. And let me know if I should do a similar video on the next world. Thank you guys and see you soon.